got rid of the virus. I needed to acquire information. Hatch a devious plan and see all your evil work come to fruition. What should we do with them, huh? No! no. What? No. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV villains. First hostage from Cornwall, the second from London, the third from Yorkshire, judging by her accent. What's he doing? Working his way around the world, showing off? For this list, we're focusing on live-action villains who are the primary antagonists of their respective shows for some period of time. Thank you. We're omitting clear-cut anti-heroes because we've already got you covered with our list of the top 10 TV anti-heroes. Of all the things I hold in high regard, rules are not one of them. I will not place my fate solely in the hands of a middleman if I can go directly to the supplier. Number 10. Theodore Teabag Bagwell, Prison Break. Evening, Mrs. Holland. Don't you look lovely this evening? It's a tough grind in the joint. When you're behind bars, everyone seems to be out to get you. But Teabag actually is. I guess that's where you're right. He uses and manipulates the inmates for his evil purposes, which makes him a dangerous adversary. Because when you sent me here to this place with these people, it brought that old dirty bastard right back home. Convicted of almost everything it's possible to be convicted of, and leader of Fox River's Aryan gang, Teabag is serving a life sentence. Don't think I won't remember what your front steps look like, Susan. When the Schofield brothers hatch their escape plan, this prison yard baddie is quick to weasel his way in and actually becomes an unlikely ally. I am the last in the line of Bagwells. The tail end of a corrupted breed. The earth, thank God, shall see no more of our generations. Number nine, Nina Myers, 24. How are you gonna pull this off, Jack? Pretending to be Alexis? I don't know yet. The best arch enemies are often friends at the start, even lovers. In day one of 24, Nina is Jack Bauer's ally and confidant as they attempt to uncover a plot to assassinate a United States senator. We can't trust Jamie. Jack said CTU had been infiltrated. Are you saying Jamie's a spy? Why else would she lie? In a world of spies and double-crossing, it's easy to get lost. But Jack is certain of Nina's loyalty until it's too late. You're, welcome. You're a very sensitive guy, Jack. I've never seen that side of you. Drop it, Teddy. We're working. Uh, Jack can walk and chew gum at the same time, can't you, Jack? Her sharp intellect, boldness, and skills in espionage make Nina a formidable foe who keeps pulling Jack Bauer back into her web of lies and deceit. Tony, you have to listen to me carefully. No one at CTU can know I'm alive. Who would think you were dead? I can't tell you anymore right now. Number eight, Arthur Mitchell, also known as the Trinity Killer, Dexter. Hey, what brings you here this fine day? Arthur Mitchell is an upstanding citizen, father, and husband. He gives back to his community and always has a smile on his face. Small cracks in the perfect family, which makes them perfectly normal. On his off time, though, Mitchell commits a series of gruesome serial murders, a cycle which he's been repeating since he was young. It's already over. Like the series protagonist Dexter, Arthur Mitchell is a serial killer who must maintain a normal social life, and that makes Dex look up to him as a mentor. Because helping someone is a good deed, and God rewards good deeds. But in order to help, I need to know the problem. That's how these things work. I really don't want to talk about it. You asked me. However, unlike Dexter, Mitchell murders the innocent, which puts the two into conflict. I thought God sent you so that I could save you. But God had another plan. So did I. He sent you to save me. Not exactly. Number seven, The Governor, The Walking Dead. It's hard to keep it together during a zombie apocalypse, but The Governor does just that, at the cost of his own sanity. As the leader of a seemingly idyllic safe place that shields people from the hordes of oncoming biters, the governor is well-spoken, polite, and courteous, like most lovable bad guys. Do I strike you as the kind of man that sits pretty? 
That is, until things don't go his way. Demonstrating a whole mess of psychopathic tendencies, the governor is not above torture or cold-blooded murder. Go put a merciful end to that young man's days. He declares open war on Rick and the gang, and stops at nothing to exterminate them. They're no different to the fighters. And they're not gonna stop until they kill us all, taking everything we've worked so hard for. Number six, J.R. Ewing, Dallas. Bye, Wanda. You take care now, here. Larry Hagman portrayed TV's favorite evil oil baron until, and even beyond, his 2012 death. I was working late. Since the late 70s, he plotted and contrived against his rivals to seize as much property and money as possible. I don't have time to talk about it, too, Ellen. I've got to get out on the road. Ewing was a classic villain in that his motive was, for the most part, clearly defined as greed. Uh, look, boys, if it's money you want, I'll show you where it is. We don't have much in the house, but you're welcome to all we got. Like all good baddies, he also had a knack for needlessly complex plans. And his villainy earned him more than his share of enemies, which is why no one was quite sure who shot JR. Who shot you, Mr. Ewing? I don't know how it happened, but you seem to have some communion with this island, John. And that makes you very, very important. Number five, Ben Linus, Lost. Like the island he inhabits, Ben is a mysterious, inscrutable character with perpetually shifting loyalties. Juliet is gathering information for us at your former camp. She's determining if any of the women are pregnant. Then we're gonna go in and take them. His cold-blooded decisions and slow, monotonous voice have branded him as a villain among the survivors of the island. I think the technical term is shock and awe. They're trying to frighten me into surrendering. But Ben's motives remain unclear throughout the series. Instead, he operates in the shadows and acts on calculating logic to do what is best for the island. I had a chance to save her, but I chose the island over her. Manipulative as anyone else on this list, and cold and detached to boot, Ben Linus is an unreadable foe, which makes him very, very dangerous. I'm not gonna ask you again. <sighs> what did he say to you? He said, help me. Number four, Gus Fring, Breaking Bad. You can never trust a drug addict. Like series protagonist Walter White, Gus is a man of two minds and of two worlds. I don't think we're alike at all, Mr. White. In the public eye, he's a prominent business owner who's friendly with his customers and always donates to the right causes. Can I help you, sir? Diet Coke, please. In the background, however, Gus is the coldly calculating head of a sprawling drug empire, becoming Walt's rival and nemesis for a memorable chunk of the series. A crippled little rata. What a reputation to leave behind. Ruthless, cunning, and unscrupulous, but secretly so, Gus Fring is the kind of bad guy you love to hate. Maybe it's better if, uh, if I do this myself. I do this. Send a raven to Castley Rock. Inform Tywin Lannister that he has been summoned to court to answer for the crimes of Gregor Clegane, or be branded an enemy of the crown and a traitor to the realm. Number three, Tywin Lannister, Game of Thrones. The Warden of the West is a powerful warlord, tall, imposing, and with an unfaltering gaze. You're gonna say something clever? Go on, say something clever. His ambition and courage was such that he was appointed the king's hand and commanded fear and respect from all that heard the Lannister name. Not next year, not tomorrow. <sighs> and while his term was known for its calm and good fortune, you don't get to be a powerful warlord without a good amount of ruthlessness. Hywin is as ruthless as they get, even when it comes to his own family. Lannisters. Don't act like fools. 
Number two, The Smoking Man, The X-Files. Go ahead, make history. Good villains are the ones that operate in shadows and use others to do their dirty work. I have a chance to go an entire lifetime without killing anybody or anything. The Cigarette Smoking Man, so named for his unhealthy habit, manipulates the US government from the background and uses any means necessary to obtain his ends. I'm sorry. The personification of evil. This is one baddie who's not afraid of his own demise. A man has infiltrated the group that I work with. That's to kill him. While it's not clear whether the smoking man is helping or hindering a possible alien invasion, he still manages to get in Mulder and Scully's way. This is the end. I never thought I'd hear myself say those words after all these years. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Pentagon. There's something there I need. What are you going to do? Finish what I've started. All you have to do is stop time before I cut off his head. Do you think you can do your little trick before I can do mine? There's a winner and a loser. That's a game. It's not a game I asked to play. No, but you played it very well nonetheless. You were fun and challenging. Thank you. Mr. Swede informs me that he's on that train. He's doing my duty as a citizen. So bitch. Hey, hey. Easy now, fella. That took our money, man. I seen it coming. Well, <laughs> he gotta go. Number one, James Jim Moriarty, Sherlock. No rush. The king of the underworld, the Napoleon of crime, Dr. James Moriarty has been a formidable opponent since his first appearance in the works of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In BBC's Sherlock, Moriarty's contemporary incarnation is cold, calculating, and delightfully psychopathic. They all want me. Suddenly, I'm Mr. Sex. He has no compassion for human life and will gladly kill innocent bystanders if it fits into his twisted games. Brilliant. Isn't it? No one ever gets to me. And no one ever will. As intelligent as his nemesis Sherlock Holmes, Moriarty is almost impossible to catch. Thank you. Bless you. Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite TV villain? Can you imagine, man, if I had the money that I have now, man, I could have bought half this waterfront property. God damn it. For more intense top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. This isn't the ending that I wrote. It's all wrong.